express any concerns or issues you might have in reference to some of the uh, uh, issues that may be on your mind this morning, mainly uh, pertaining to the uh, document that people are talking about this particular day. We have a solid team here who's going to answer the questions as best we can by going to try to keep this as we always have over the last 10 months. I think I've met with a number of you on a occasions. They see it quite often. And we've had some extremely, extremely good exchanges. We've, we've disagreed on some things, but we've been able to work them out and work them out well. And I honestly can say the past 10 months, we have done a really good job, I feel, personally. And I can speak on behalf of the department, the department, the department of administration. We've done a really awesome job working together as a team to make sure we have less, less to no violence and people cooperating and getting along and responding respectively to uh, the, the rules and the laws and the And that's what we want to continue to do. So I have with me today, I want to let everyone introduce themselves uh, so you can get a chance to hear their voice because I think most of you know by now when I start talking, sometimes I'll talk for two or three hours at one time and I don't want to do that because we have a two hour uh, meetings set up this morning. So again, I want to start right now with our Deputy Secretary. Hi, I'm Chris Shainer. I'm the Deputy Secretary of the Department of Administration. First, thank you for taking time out of your morning to, uh, to meet with us. Um, I know we have this scheduled for two hours. We won't go two hours if we don't need it. Uh, our front end of this is going to be relatively short. Just to kind of describe a little bit about how we came to the point we are, why, why we chose this particular time. And then talk to really for the procedure of what we're, we're looking to do and what we're looking to implement here. Um, everybody, if you can, pull up here. This is a relatively intimate group, so I think that'll work well. Uh, really, the purpose of this policy is twofold. Uh, first off, there's been a number of different documents over the last probably 10 to 15 years that outlined or tried to outline the uh, procedure and the policy for how people had events or had displays within the Capitol. Um, I think we found that those documents were wanting. Uh, we were looking to create a document that provided a lot more detail, provided a lot more of the information that's in there. The other alternative was to refer people to the Administrative Code, Chapter 2. That's not the most user-friendly document in the world, and we wanted to pull some put the information out of there to make it a little bit easier for people to understand what exactly their, their responsibilities were, what their expectations should be from us, and what our expectations would be of the people that are going to have this place there. Um, the second reason for that was to, uh, we've had over the past 10, 10 months, I think we can all agree we've had a rather unprecedented time here in the state of Wisconsin, and that um, we've had a number of, of legal questions and lawsuits filed about access to the, to the Capitol, and felt that it was important at this time to make a policy that uh, took the, the information from the administrative code and put it into a format that people can use, and also that we have uh, a process and a policy that's in place to make sure that that is consistently applied to all people who wish to have uh, access to the Capitol for whatever their event might be. So that's really the two reasons we're, we look to do it at this particular time. Uh, one of the lawsuits is, is ongoing right now, and it was time to go along with that. So uh, Ben Mazel lawsuit it originally has been taken over by the group called one. So that's part of the process, part of the timing for why we're doing what we're doing now. Um, I think in practical terms, for those who have had events at the Capitol before, and they say, what's going to be all that much different now? Very little will be different. Within the policy itself, if you look at it, probably the things that will be somewhat different is there is an appeals process that's spelled out within the policy now. That really was not provided in the past. Have that now. There's some time frames around what people can expect, what our expectations are for permits to be filed, and then again, for what time they can expect people or the, the uh, Capitol Police to respond to those permit requests. So I think those are probably the two major things that you'll see that are different. There might be some other things in there as well. The main driver behind this, though, is to help coordinate events within the Capitol. We want to ensure, and the Chief of Police Department has been uh, uh, stressing this for a long time, there's the ability for people to have access to the Capitol to be able to uh, exercise their First Amendment rights, but do it in a safe and secure atmosphere. 
We have multiple groups with multiple views, and that's great. And we want to ensure that they all have that opportunity to do that. Uh, and the better that we can coordinate those things, and the better that people know what the expectations are, it helps to eliminate some of the potential surprises. We want people to understand what the requirements are, what the obligations are, and again, what they can expect from, uh, from the, the Capitol Police and others when they're having events in, in state facilities. Um, the permit application itself, you've got these somewhere, and there's a, there's a very short explanation of that. It's a one-page document, uh, relatively short, easy to get through. Um, this really is the document that starts the conversation. Everybody may have some specific questions about their specific events. They may have something that's a little bit different with their events than, than you might see with others. If you look at an event like the crossing wall, or you look at uh, concerts on the square, or um, the farmer's market, or what have you, that's a very different kind of event than you might have with a smaller group that might be singing in. So there's different requirements. But this is how we get it started. This is how we start talking about what your time frame is, what the what the, the number of people you expect, what your requirements will be for the particular event itself. And, uh, and that's really the key driver. If you read in the policy, you'll see that it is content neutral. It's more a matter of how many people do you have, where do you have them, what are you going to need, and where do you want to have your event. Again, that's to ensure that uh, we have multiple events that are looking to be in the same place at the same time. That's not going to work for anybody. So we're looking to try to coordinate that out a little bit better. Um, the chief primary goal in all of this, and you'll, you've heard this from the chief before and you'll continue to hear it in the future, is their goal is to ensure that we have public safety. And I think uh, they've done a commendable job of that under some what have been uh, very unusual circumstances, and, uh, and that's continued to be the case. Those of you who know the chief and know other people on his staff know that he's had, he and their staff have had a, uh, a preferred approach of voluntary compliance. And that's what we're looking for here. Uh, that really starts with communication. Uh, we talked, some people, when the chief and I were talking about having the public information, and he said, why are you going to do that? Uh, you're just going to end up with people yelling at each other. Well, maybe we'll have a little bit of that. But I'm also hoping that we have a dialogue so we can start the communication so that we understand what we're looking to achieve here. And I want to make it very clear that that whole approach towards voluntary compliance and, uh, and having that open communication is just not the chief. That's the Department of Administration as well. We hold that very, uh, we think that's been, been well, uh, well executed thus far, and we want to continue that going forward. Now, I respect that there are folks potentially within this room who may have legal concerns or other uh, philosophical questions about the policy itself. Now, I'll admit on the front end, I am not a lawyer, but even if I were, this is not the form in which we're going to be able to resolve that. There's courts. That's where we go to resolve those particular issues. We can talk through the policy and the process here, but those issues are, are larger than what we can do right here. There are others who also may have some questions about what's in the administrative code in Chapter 2 and say, well, maybe it should be something different. Understand that, respect that. That's a, a process that needs to go through the legislature. Again, that's not something that we can address here. The other thing that I'm not going to be able to do is go through hypotheticals today. You say, what if this? What if that? The real conversation we need to have is if you have a permit uh, application in place, we can start that conversation. Again, from our perspective, uh, when we get one of those, we want to be able to take a look at it, and when, if we're putting conditions on any permit, make sure that it's consistent uh, amongst all groups. And that may take us a little bit of time. We'll work through that very quickly. But we understand that there will be a tremendous amount of scrutiny around this. And there should be. We're comfortable with that. So I'm not going to give an off-the-cuff answer to what might be a very serious question. If we need to do more research on it and sure where we're at, we're going to do that. But we do want to work with people and work through this process when people have an actual permit application to do that as quickly as possible. Again, we want to ensure that uh, people are that we have a coordinated effort, that if people have an expectation that they're going to have this space for this particular event, that indeed they do. And that they can conduct their event, again, in a safe uh, and secure atmosphere. Uh, and that we're respectful of each other in the process. So again, I thank you for, uh, for taking time out this morning to, uh, to meet with us. And uh, if I missed anything, Chief, or otherwise we can start some of the dialogue here. Do you want to introduce her? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Wendy Comer Dean is also from, uh, she's the Executive Assistant at the uh, Department of Administration. Jocelyn Webster right. is our, our Communications Director. And uh, Tim Lundquist is also in our Communications so, with that, Chief, is oh, I'm sorry, Dan Blackbird is Deputy Chief. Can we come out here and see you? Oh, sure. We can't see you, lovely ladies. <laughs>
There's a, there's a handsome gentleman sitting back there. Well, I, I, I assume you're not talking about me. You <laughs> must be talking about the chief. And, and Sue, and uh, Dan, you probably already know. Uh, Dan's deputy chief. Sue is the one who, who is kind of the intake processor of the, of the applications, the permit applications. So she's the frontline person that will usually get those and more than happy to chat and talk with people walking through the, the, the specifics of that form. So again, uh, thank you. And if there are any uh, questions about the, the process, I'll, tr I'll try to answer them. If I can't answer them, I will tell you that. And then I'll get back to the question. Um, well, I have many questions. Um, so the first one is, um, you know, I read um, I understand you can't speak to hypotheticals, Correct. Um, but we do have some questions on how the uh, Capitol Police and how the DOA um, would make decisions on deploying police officers, uh, putting further restrictions on the rights of protesters. Um, so could you tell me uh, how you would intend to allocate police costs, for instance, um, when there's a, a rally and also when there's a counter rally? You know, if you're going to be charging individuals for the, the presence of police at these rallies, how do you split up those costs between protesters and counter-protesters? I think we have to look at the specific event. Let me take one, and then let's, let's talk about the 800 pound elephant in the room. Uh, I think folks are wondering about the solidarity centers. Now, until I have a permit and application, I can't speak to that specifically. But what I can tell you is that in the past, when we've had smaller groups um, that have done any kind of musical presentation in the rotunda of the Capitol, we have adequate police staff to cover that. There would be no cost involved with that. So that's kind of the, the look. If we have enough staff on hand within our, our uh, within the Capitol Police, there isn't an additional charge with that. If we're looking at how we allocate that out, again, the people who are sponsoring the event, who have actually the permit, um, they are not responsible for what we need to do on the counter, on the counter, uh, on the counter protest. So again, we'll have to look at the individual specifics of the, of the event that's before us. I will work with people on that. Yes, good question. Could people who ask the question identify themselves if they're willing? Sure. Uh, my name is Stacy Harbaugh. I'm with the ACLU of Wisconsin. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Kim Sprecker, a citizen of Madison. So can I ask you a question? Sure. How many applications for permits do you get per week? Per week? Approximately. 10, 15, eight. We do between four and 500 every year. And how many are denied? Just a handful, and basically because we already have something scheduled. But do you try to work with that group then to say, well, we've got something that's scheduled right. until this point, but then we can reschedule you? Okay. Yes. And I think if they're not timely. Right. Yeah. I'm sorry. Well, if they're not timely, if it's So a, if they don't get in before the 72 hours prior to, yeah, then it's denied yeah. automatically. Uh, I don't know that they're necessarily. But no, they're not. They're not denied on that. We look at it and see if there's a way we can work with groups. We also look at the opportunities. If it doesn't work in this particular location, maybe moving it to another location. We do try to accommodate and do that. Sue does an outstanding job of working at this and keeping me informed on how we are going to try to make this event work for the benefit of the citizens. So there's a lot of, it's not a, a, a quick uh, denial. We look at everything, we review it, we look at personnel, and if we're going to need additional personnel. Is Sue with the see. Capitol Police, or are you just, yes. are you, yes. okay, are you looking for an assistant, perhaps, to help you with these yeah. applications? <laughs> <laughs> I'm available. I'd be happy to. I work for Chief. We, we are currently right now in the process of finishing an interview as a hire an assistant for Sue. Oh, great. Yes. Can I put in an application? Do I have to be a police officer, or? No, okay. you don't have to, but I can honestly tell you that the application it's process done. is closed, oh, and we're looking right now to try to fill this position in the next couple of weeks. Oh, man. Thanks. Yes, sir. Um, looking at... Who are you? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. My name is Greg Pack, and I'm going to represent Sinecki's office. Mm -hmm. um, and looking at the way things happened in the Capitol in February and March, this year compared to how things have gone in other cities um, around the country with the